Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's Girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day so if there's something in particular that you guys want us to react to let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below and we'll do it for you you can check out our second youtube channel called funny and jesse 2.0 head there subscribe and enjoy our weekly content we've got a podcast called diving in with funny and jesse and we have some amazing conversations which you guys don't want to miss you can find us on itunes spotify podbean this channel or our second youtube channel for the visual and we've got a patreon you guys can feel free to become members and we'll appreciate a big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel so far thank you for subscribing liking commenting sharing everything that you guys are doing never goes unnoticed so thank you very much i hope you guys are doing all right and may you stay blessed so today i'm going to react into this fact from the quran will blow your mind guaranteed so without wasting time let's get into the video Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters, I hope you are well. In this video, we'll talk about human embryo. In the Holy Quran, God speaks about the stages of man's embryonic development. In the Quran, we created man from an extract of clay, then we made him as a drop in a place of settlement, firmly fixed. Then we made the drop into an alaqata, leech or suspended thing or blood clot. Then we made the alakata into a mudugata, chewed substance. Literally, the Arabic word alakata has three meanings, leech, suspended thing, and blood clot. In comparing a leech to an embryo, in the alakata stage, we find similarity between the two, as we can see in figure one. Also, the embryo at this stage obtains nourishment from the blood of the mother, similar to the leech, which feeds on the blood of others. Drawings illustrating the similarities in appearance between a leech and human embryo at the alakata stage. Leech drawing from human development as described in the Quran and Sunnah. The embryo attaches itself to the mother to feed, just like a leech attaches itself to a host to feed. The embryo also looks like a leech. The embryo looks like a leech but these pictures are magnified by microscope. Nobody knew this 1400 years ago. However, this was portrayed in the Quran. Allahu Akbar. The second meaning of the word alakata is suspended thing. This is what we can see in figures 2 and 3. The suspension of the embryo during the alakata stage in the womb of the mother. We can see in this diagram the suspension of an embryo during the alakata stage in the womb, uterus of the mother. In this photo micrograph we can see the suspension of an embryo marked B during the alakata stage, about 15 days old, in the womb of the mother. The actual size of the embryo is about 0.6 mm. Subhanallah. The third meaning of the word alakata is blood clot. We find that the external appearance of the embryo and its sacs during the alakata stage is similar to that of a blood clot. This is due to the presence of relatively large amounts of blood present in the embryo during this stage. Also, during this stage, the blood in the embryo does not circulate until the end of the third week. Thus, the embryo at this stage is like a clot of blood. So the three meanings of the word alakata correspond accurately to the descriptions of the embryo at the alakata stage. The next stage mentioned in the verse is the mudgata stage. The Arabic word mudgata means chewed substance. If one were to take a piece of gum and chew it in his or her mouth and then compare it with an embryo at the mudgata stage, we would conclude that the embryo at the mudgata stage acquires the appearance of a chewed substance. This is because of the somites at the back of the embryo that somewhat resemble teeth marks in a chewed substance. Photograph of an embryo at the mudgata stage, 28 days old. The actual size of the embryo is 4 mm. When comparing the appearance of an embryo at the mudgata stage with a piece of gum that has been chewed, we find similarity between the two. Drawing of an embryo at the mudgata stage. We can see here the somites at the back of the embryo that look like a teeth marks. Subhanallah. 
How could Prophet Muhammad وسلم, have possibly known all this 1400 years ago? When scientists have only recently discovered this using advanced equipment and powerful microscopes which did not exist at that time. Ham and Anthony Van were the first scientists to observe human sperm cells using an improved microscope in 1677, more than 1000 years after Muhammad وسلم. Professor Keith Leon Moore is one of the world's most prominent scientists in the fields of anatomy and embryology and is the author of the book entitled The Developing Human, which has been translated into eight languages. This book is a scientific reference work and was chosen by a special committee in the United States as the best book authored by one person. In 1981, during the 7th medical conference in Dammam, Saudi Arabia, Professor Moore said, It has been a great pleasure for me to help clarify statements in the Quran about human development. It is clear to me that these statements must have come to Muhammad from God because almost all of this knowledge was not discovered until many centuries later. This proves to me that Muhammad must have been a messenger of God. Consequently, Professor Moore was asked the following question. Does this mean that you believe that the Quran is the word of God? He replied, I find no difficulty in accepting this. Allahu Akbar. How could a man who lived 1400 years ago have known how an embryo looks like? Brothers and sisters, if you like this video, then give this video a like and share this video to your friends and family. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum. This was amazing. I always say that if you want information, if you want information in this life, you really have to go out there and find out. Because we've got books like the Quran that have been able to predict maybe even more things than you ever expected that the Quran could pre predict. So it's not just about um, sitting here and listening to someone talk because, because then you're limiting yourself. Also, for the knowledge that you already have, don't just say the knowledge I have is enough to get me through life. Be out there, go out there, read more books, read the Quran, read scientific work, read reports, research, anything that you want to read. As long as your main purpose is to open you up to the world of other people and their opinions, their statements, whatever they think could be maybe facts, whatever they think, be open-minded to take in more information than you already know. Don't just be seated in one position thinking you the knowledge you come looking for you you have to go out there looking for the knowledge a big shout out to the person that suggested this and i think like i think that i've reacted to this concerning the embryo i'm not even sure that's why i'm not even commenting about it otherwise it was a great video great information i hope you guys are learning as well make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video